Yeah, Peanut Lee Sin going up against the Jarvan from the likes of Cast. So that's been the matchup we've been keeping our eyes on throughout the series so far. Peanut definitely had the best of it in game number one, but he's not going to fall back on either of his AP junglers in the Gregs or the Elise because they were taken off of the board. And Yuki looking to go for this Lissandra once again. I liked it in game one. Never no. mind. We've got a Maokai mid. Why put Maokai against Orn when you can have them both on your team? Well, let's say Orn mid for now and see how we go, okay? Let's, let's just, just see what Knight picks up here, knowing that either way, he's versing a tank. I mean, it, honestly, Orn mid, Maokai mid, they're kind of interchangeable. Like, <laughs> there's really not that much difference between those two picks. But there's a lot of frontline on the side of LGD. There's oh, not yeah. a whole ton of follow-up damage, though, it well, has to be said. What did I say before? Kramer's going on hit, no matter what, because you need damage. And it's going to be all about Kramer. Like, <laughs> but here's the thing, right? You have to play for the late game with double tank. You're going to be scaling on up. And yes, you have the Orn. Yes, you have the Varus. But Knight's able to pick up the Azir. There's an MF for a good amount of early got pressure. GP. And then you got GP. GP scales amazingly into the late game. Who's going to be able to match him in a side lane later on? Well, so we're, we're going to have a big fight. I mean, essentially, we've just set it up. It's going to be a very big fight. But I will say this is more like a top esports draft where there is more emphasis on the solo lanes, much like we'd see on, on IG. But the difference is that... We are set up to succeed through 369 to bottom lane, through the jungle, and also through, through Knight, who's not on Zoe for once. So we actually He's get to see his Azir. Azir. We're going to see his Azir. It will take a little while before it ramps on into the game, but I am a little bit perplexed by the Orn Maokai no, combo. No, 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 You're no. going to be really tanky. And I mean, We've it's not back. often that you see Orn upgrade tank items on other people. Oh, sun, double, double sunfire. sunfire cape. I mean, it's going to be hot. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be hot. Thank you so much. That's all I got. Double Sunfire. Is it wise to set a tree on fire, though? I don't know. As an Australian, you know that isn't the burning Isn't thing. the burning bush something from, like... The Bible? Yeah. Oh, no, we shouldn't go into that, but, you know... Like, <laughs> the burning analysis, bush! Analysis, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> analysis. Let's get on into this game and all save right. us from the camera. So, I was right with Orn. You should never judge your colour. Orn mid, of course, was going to be the play here because the Maokai... He wants the 1v1, the gangplank. Let's go. I wonder what he builds first. Sunfire? Sunfire. Probably nah. Sunfire. Nah, he probably Love goes... I, sunfire. I reckon we see a Bramble first. Either way, Munchables, give me that sweet intro. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're jumping into game number two of the final series of the day. It's Top Esports on your red side. And it's LGD over on the blue side of the map. We'll see if LGD can finish this one off with a 2-0 victory. Or if Top are going to take us all the way. With the double tank on Spellbook and Aftershock on Maokai. And it's Maokai. What a blessing. What an absolute blessing. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to play this champion in competitive, you kind of have to go for the Maokai. You do that, skin. or you do victorious Maokai to show you at least got gold last season. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not that impressed. Well, people not need that to impressed. know. What? Would I've you... met a gold player before, and they weren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Well, I tell you what. If it takes me calling drafts stale to bring out drafts that are actually quite interesting and different from what we normally see, I'm cool with that. Well, we got tempo on Varus, so we are going to see the on-hit build. You We're would not going to see lethality coming out there. If we do see lethality, I don't know what to say. Kramer, no, no, you're mental. Look. I don't think it's going to happen. You're right. Stick with <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. We've got Grasp on 369, though. So ever since we've lost Klepto, we just go to the lane we know. Casa coming mid. Level 1 on Yuki. Means an instant flash away from the Orn. So good parping from Casa. It seems like top esports, a good recovery to get into the second game. This is more of what we know, right? Top Esports playing around Knight, trying to set him up early, going for early ganks. Last game, we saw Castor and Peanut both focusing on the top side. This time, Castor straight off the bat forces a flash out of Yuki. Into the lane that they were built for. Castor comes onto this team because he plays well with Knight and because these guys, back in the days of Young Miracles, played together. So, we're to another point where, okay, Top Esports, early momentum set. Where do they go from here? Carson now towards the bottom lane, but Chance and Kramer have the shove. 
And Ward here that Casa's not going to spot. Immediate back away from Kramer and Chance. They know that Casa's here. There's a Ward in try as well. So he knows he's been spotted. They know he's been spotted. Everybody knows what's going down. And Casa waddles away with his tail between his legs. I will apologize. Actually, Tian and Knight, who were on Young Miracles together. Casa, of course, would have been at LMS at that time. But good flay bottom lane. That's actually really good trading from Kramer and Chance. Yuanjia, Yuanjia, taking a good chunk there. Does have his stack of his shoulder guards available, so get a little bit of sustain from that. Interestingly, running the heal on the Braum so that Fotic can have the cleanse without sacrificing the heal. But meanwhile, you wanted to see jungle versus jungle. Peanut waits. He sees Kasa here on the ward with Scuttle. He's going to look to go in mid before Kasa gets here. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least he's going to shove the he wave did. in mid, I guess. Did it. Kasa wants the 2v2, though. Go straight in onto no Yuki. Knockup might be here from Yuki, though. And Kasa has been left out to dry by Knight. They, he does not want the 2v2 uh. at all. Knight, I, just complete miscommunication there from the side of top. Peanut with the follow-up flash gets first blood on his lease in. I mean, Massive punish. And what was just, that? Yeah. That was just like, I mean, they were clearly just on completely different pages. Kasa wanted to go for the play. Knight just wanted to recall. After what was an early burnt flash from Yuki, he gets put into a corner again, and the Lee Sin has to back away. So for top esports, I mean, I'm going to use a word that I heard so much from LS when there were really questionable plays in the L LCK. It's perplexing to see <laughs> from such good players. Yeah, I don't really know what was going on there, but Peanut... Goes for his customary top side ganks here. The slow is there, the dash forward, but Cast is here to match. Teleport now. Channel from Yuki. Suddenly we have a fight on our hands. Oh, Yuki's yeah. arrived on towards Knight. Who's gonna be out on his own for a little bit here? 369 drops a barrel. Can't quite get the damage off though. There's a knockup onto Yuki. He will be the first casualty as Lies flashes away with his life, but not for long. And now Peanut going to be collapsed on, and it's a double kill for 369. Starts with the bait in from the orange from 369, and this gangplank brings it back for top esports. Casters follow up, and the damage that comes through afterwards from Knight, who can just walk up to the top lane and free hit. Top esports bring it right on back, and LGD. They thought they could take that 3v3. They fall one after another. I mean, thank God that Top have found a play here because if they hadn't, I really feel like it would have been done so. That orange and grasp. And then the follow-up lies. Doesn't have any mana here, so Yuki following up. This is a point where they just have to get out, but Yuki's like, okay, I can get the knock up here and then we can turn it around. But Peanut walks forward. He's just trying to... It's the fact that they're able to clear up all three of these kills as well. It's such a massive advantage against a team that is going to be building tank in both mid and top lane. Being able to find a gold lead and find an item advantage can make such a huge difference in the lanes. It means it's not as neutral as the side of LGD want it to be. And it means that now 369 has a sheen to proc onto lies in lane with a blue buff. So this tank is going to get absolutely slaughtered. Also has the cannon barrage. The only reason that 369 has to back off here is because Peanut is towards the top side. Yeah, I really feel like if LGD had managed to win out that situation, the mentality from top might have just been broken on the spot. After the first blood going the way of LGD and the way that game one ended, it really didn't feel good for top. But managing to find a 3v3 like that, it's going to revitalize the players. Yuki still having both summoners, though, might be able to make something happen mid if Peanut heads on down this way. Well, he's going behind the mid-wave, so he won't find his path in for now. Uh, with an early shove, and he's starting to abuse this Ornn lane. So even with summoners, the Azir, the range advantage, the fact that Knight doesn't have to get in front of this wave, Ornn likes to punish through the wave, likes to get that Searing Charge with the Q combo. But he can't do that with Knight. So difficult situation here through the mid lane. Plus Knight still has his flash available. Yep, Knight now level 6, so the Emperor's Divide will be available as well. Massive in terms of these team fights. And I wonder how that actually interacts with the Orn charge. I'd imagine it denies it entirely. Or he maybe just, he gets the knock up on the, the soldiers. Ex express delivery, maybe. You know, he charges through and you just keep sending him through. It's like a conveyor <laughs> belt. I was thinking the other way, but I guess you could just keep him going. <laughs> That's true. Send him behind you. <laughs> Get under the we'll see this interaction in this game. And also, remember, call the Forge God. The ability to interrupt it with the Emperor's Divide is a nice little tidbit there as well. But... Jungle v. Jungle, Cast is level 6, Peanut is not. 
Peanut gonna be starting his blue buff off. Kicks it back immediately and <laughs> decides he does not want to fight Carter right now. He knows he's at a disadvantage and with the vision cleared, Knight could walk on forward and take this blue buff for himself. Although Peanut will be here to contest. Peanut did just smite his wolf though, I believe. He yeah, doesn't have it available, so Carter just takes it and leaves, but can he get out? Ah, uh, Kasa might actually end up going down for this one. Ignite popped in as a kill for Yuki. In the meantime, Lies is in a 2v1. Knight with the Empress Divide keeps the whole of LGD at bay. And now LGD moves straight onto the Herald. I mean, the bonus of tanks is there's a lot of base damage here available at this point in the game. But LGD strike first and into the Rift Herald they go. Yu Yu and Jazz, like, I'm going to pick my head around. Votix coming up as well, but not sure if they'll make it in time. It relies on Knight. <laughs> He's looking for the oh, no. solo steal of the Brawl. <laughs> He's out He's for three people. Obviously not going to get it. I, don't know. <laughs> I love how LGD are like, no, no, not the Brawl. Anyone but the Brawl. <laughs> we don't want to be near him. Oh, dear. I guess they obviously thought he had backup. <laughs> he very well, I mean, much he did almost not have backup. Had Knight at the back of the pit. I don't know. <laughs> but there you go. I mean, that's just alpha play for you, Yanchia. But we haven't had the chance to look at a replay yet. I'm sure shortly we will when things settle down a little bit. But top esports have been using this mid lane advantage, using Knight's early shove here against the tank to make these roams to pressure top side or to pressure things like the Rift Herald. But the turnaround from LGD there, really good decision making once again here in the early game. And good decision making that consistently throughout this series has been making LGD look like a better team. They're still willing to make risks but they're also willing to back out more so than what we saw at the start of the split. Now, with the game stabilizing at a 2-3 scoreline, it's Top Esports with the gold lead, about 1,000 ahead in their favor. Carson knows it, and he's going to start this dragon off. With Herald down, he can confidently move towards the bottom side of the map, but Peanut is here to contest, so Carson needs to be careful how much he commits to this. Yuki's shortly going to have his ultimate available. This is the tool that top esports fear. They need the Brom Shield. The interaction is everything. But with Photic here, the bullet time will be available. It's a massive ultimate in these team fights, and especially against the bottom lane of LGD. If Kramer and Chance get caught up in that, it will obliterate their health bars. Peanut, Peanut spotted. Start the dragon, though. But they're backing away, even though the Jarvan's just going to leave it. I mean, for LGD, not willing to take the risk. Instead, they might want the pick onto whoever checks it. But it, it really feels like both of these teams are playing very nervously. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure on the line here for top. Obviously, they can't really afford to lose a game like this. They need every point in the standings. If they want to perform better than their previous seasons, and that's what people are hoping for them they need wins like this on the board they need to be confident against teams like lgd on the other side of the board lgd they're desperate to get this win they're desperate to get something on the board and against a team like top it really would be a good way to revitalize this roster for their first series win as well but you can see why lgd were acting scared there you have a trinity force gangplank at 11 minutes in the game who got an early double kill who has cannon barrage and now teleport available so Peanut needed this dragon to be completely abandoned by top esports. And Cass has done that. He's headed to the top side. They've given over the stats to the double tank. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a mountain soul with both a Maokai and an Orn. But at least you get that 6% armor and magic resist buff. And that goes the way to LGD. I mean, it's a Cloud Drake next. So it's still possible that it's that Ocean Soul. And if LGD get an Ocean Soul with Orn and Maokai. I mean, at that point, there's no killing anybody. Yeah, it's going to be a real pain to deal with. But slower paced team compositions from both. So we're going to be here for a while. And it's literally just going to be who's accumulated the most wealth in lane. Right now, I'm scared of 369. I'm scared of Knight. I mean, you're not in the game. You don't need to be scared of him. No, but you, know, you know what I mean. Oh, chain disruption. <laughs> Good cleanse. <laughs> It's going to be Braun pulled on <laughs> in a kicked <laughs> on back. I don't know why that was so funny. <laughs> it's just like, he tries to block, and they're like, no, 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 we want you. <laughs> a quick kill. Peanut gets another. He has Rift Herald as well, so they can escalate this and keep pushing. Botix by himself, and, and Kasa's nowhere nearby. Kasa is on the way. 
The Eye of the Herald will be picked up by Fotik, and that's going to stop the tower going down. He's able to position pretty aggressively onto Kramer, force him away, and make sure that he can finish this minion wave in peace. <laughs> Great camera work as well, the one minion to stop the back, but at least they get a bit of turret plating towards the bottom lane. So it's every inch in this kind of game. I am excited, though, because <laughs> when you think about this game, you are going to see a massive team fight. That's how this game ends. I love how the LPL observers are so used to the chaotic games that when it goes this slow, they're willing they're to bored. stop and watch <laughs> Meow Kai's recall <laughs> animation. <laughs> Literally, like, watch a minion stop Kramer's recall. Like, things like this, where... You're right. We're not used to seeing games this slow. Six kills at 13 minutes. I mean, it's not LCK, but it's close. There'd be one kill in LCK, <laughs> and there'd be another every 10 minutes. Yeah, we, uh, comparatively, we've had a lot of action, it has let's, to be said. Let's get into it, right? While we have time. The reason that LPL has a lot of kills, and this is going to be super critical, but it's not because it's... it's not They're not fiestas, right? LPL is a skill check region, and teams like taking risks oh, like this. Peanut. I can't believe he managed to land that Q on tonight. He's got kick flash. He's going to flash forward, Woo! then go for the kick. Cast is here, but he's afraid. Just big old peanut on big old Lee Sin. You seen him at Worlds? I have, and Lee Sin was his champion every single time. But let's have an Orn versus Gangplank. Here we go, Yuki. Looking for the fight on 369. <laughs> now, guys, here to He's help. got the backup of another oh, Here time. we go, the boys. <laughs> the boys. Get the in there. double bounces, <laughs> bobbing through the jungle. Peanut's finally here. He's the damage that they need, but he seems nice to be perfectly safe. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> like, again, just the same old. Lies almost level 11. Does it matter? Not really, but he's getting levels. And he's got a Sunfire Cape as well. So tank items starting to accumulate here for the side of LGD. And again, I come back to my point. It's a skill check region. Everyone's about testing the limits of another. It's about saying, I am the better player. I can do this. I can outplay. And it's a lot confidence. of the time, yeah, confidence. Like Peanut there. Confidence he could take Knight. Even with Flash, even with Emperor's Divide. Peanut's like, I can take this one-on-one. -on -one. And he took it. He won it. He was a confident player on the day. Well, it's Caster that's confidently walking up to the Rift Herald here. That is true. No contest from Peanuts so far. 5,000 health remaining, and I think they're going to be able to get this one without any sort of follow-up from the side of LGD. They're happy to trade it, or they're going to try and trade it for a tower in the bottom lane. Oh, wow. One more tower shot would have done it there. A bit of movement speed slow as well, so Kramer almost took it as heal and flash, but you don't want to use that. And Kramer's just trying to absorb gold on the bottom side. Remember, you've got a full tank lineup. Now, Peanuts ahead, which is great, which is part of this early game damage, but... You need Kramer to get some resources. Otherwise, Top Esports will steamroll and there will be no damage from LGD. We have a trade of the Tier 1s for the first tower going the way of Top Esports. So extending that gold lead ever so slightly. Still just a 1,000 for them. But both teams, I mean, look at the compositions. You can't really expect there to be that much action in the early game. You've got all scaling on both sides. The only difference makers really are going to be in that jungle but even then you know on the side of Casa, it's definitely favored towards the later stages of the game especially when he's building that tanky build peanut will fall off later on so you have to wonder maybe lgd should be trying to put their foot down a little bit but i have to wonder where the damage is going to come with from the tank for lg yeah. <laughs> in the late game team fights what if kramer gets caught out it's just done i was going to ask an abyssal mask on lies would that have been the go-to but it doesn't stack, does it? Passive doesn't stack itself. No, it's a unique passive. So it's not going to give the extra magic damage for the Maokai. Sorry, I'm just thinking aloud here. There's going to be a dragon going over the side of top esports. Yeah, you, you only get one aura. Yeah. Oh, oh you only get one debuff on the, on the enemy. I think, but I don't know. But another MR item. You expect to come through. Good play. Chance going to get the hook onto this Braum. Peanut trying to get onto Fotic, and he'll find the Sonic Wave. Oh. Oh no, he's messed it up. The root won't land. Fotic oh, flashes what? on this spot. <laughs> but 
Peanut has been caught out. Bullet time onto Chance. There's a stop which is all. 369 is getting solo killed by a Maokai what in the meantime. Happening? That's two kills for Kramer. And Knight finds himself alone. Only just used the Emperor's Divide, but he gets him a double kill. And now onto Yuki as well. The he can't cut down the tanks. The beefy boys are in town. The boys are back in town, baby. Yuki and Lai is the only one left remaining because those guys are alpha as anything. Both Lies and Yuki, level 11. They hit that fight hard, and Lies 1v1s 3 6 9. He didn't actually quite get the kill Doesn't in the matter. end. <laughs> he removed some scurvy and got away with his life, but Lies bullies him out of the fight entirely. All right. Now, I apologize for my chuckle, but <laughs> I mean, the, the, the kick. The, it was so much chaos. The uh, nature's just grasped the kick, and then both flash. I guess it dodges the Sonic Wave. It doesn't. <laughs> but the board time zones away. Peanut doesn't care. He's moving away. Look at Lies against 369. He flashes forward. He's so close. And then Knight's like, all right, my time to shine. Even though he gets Peanut, look at Yuki and Lies. So hard to kill. So super interesting interaction there. I've not seen that before. Yuki, when he uses his Bellows Breath, actually walked forwards through the Azir Wall. So the Azir yep. wall blockage, I guess, counts as consistent CC. Interest. I mean, it doesn't really impact this game in any way, hey, but hey, it's hey, just we're an interesting interaction. Yeah. When you have um, uh, what's the actual? What are we actually calling it? Unstoppable. Yeah. Like mouth mm -hmm. Together. Well, you want to know what I know? After that fight, after this, I guess, quote-unquote, success oh, no. for LGD. Lies has been found. We're doing he it again. A beefy boy, as we've said before. Not beefy enough, though. Knight gets yet another kill for himself. Three, two, and four on the Azir. Can't really get away with walking into four members, even as a Maokai tank. So, bit of an error here from Lies. I mean, he doesn't really have any MR yet, either. And Knight is the predominant factor when it comes to the damage from the side of top right now. He's the one that's been sweeping up the kills in these fights, so... Once that Spirit Visage comes in, though, it's going to be an issue trying to deal with Lies. And remember as well, when still not to that point where for the side of LGD with the double tank, they can utilize people like Kramer, where the tanks can be a nuisance, where they can be the front line that Kramer needs, and that he has enough damage to really follow through. So right now for top esports, taking every opportunity they can get, a good gold lead at 20 minutes. And expect this to go for a little bit longer. Just a little bit. 7-7 seven, seven on the scoreboard. As you said, 3,000 gold lead. And a lot of that is coming from those towers. It's three for the side of top and only one on the side of LGD. And now Dragon, a minute and a half away. You'd expect that to be the next objective that these teams could clash over. Give Ocean, as you said, to LGD. And this game becomes interesting. Well, you said it was like they were unkillable, but I'm going to say LGD becomes super interesting with an Ocean Soul this game. They knew it. Maokai won't They knew die. it would be an Ocean Soul <laughs> kind of game. And they drafted around I it. I will say, if it was Mountain, I think it'd be worse. Do you think it'd be worse? No, I don't know, because you're already so tanky. I think that the health regen is way more valuable. Because yeah. you've got to think about effective health. Hang right? on. You've got to think about how much each point of health counts for. But they are two-manning Baron right now. Yeah. Pings aren't going down. This is not spotted. But can they consistently do this? I think they need Photic. Photic's here, though. This is going to be traded for a mid lane tier one, but I oh. think that's a trade they're happy to make. The ping's now coming down. Castle, Castle incredibly low. I don't know if they can actually finish this one Wait. off. Peanut's here. Get the smite. Oh, no, he's dead. Oh, Peanut gets what? it. It's all gone wrong. And Peanut has been the better jungler so far this series. Finds the kill. Finds the Baron and Top get punished for cheesing. I don't even think Casa smited the Baron. He ran into his death while Peanut just cleaned up the rest. It's time for a replay and it's time for LGD to actually just punish mid. And honestly, we, what we've learned here today is that Azir is not equal to Aphelios. You cannot just 20 minute two man cheese the Baron quite the same. And oh. now the knockups go on through. 369, the target, and it's a pullback pull straight on tonight. Empress Divide can't come out in time there. And it's going to be a couple of kills going either way, but the tower going the way of LGD. If your team wasn't comprised of an Orn and a Maokai, that bullet time would have sent it right back. But. Low health pass for LGD does not equal giving up this ocean, it seems. They're going to look for a pick and see if they can find top. Cast is here. 
They're going to be looking in. for the bait in the brush. Braum is tanky and will walk away with his life. Carter jumps onto the back line. Look at Kramer, They're though. So tanky. They just can't <laughs> finish these kills off. Peanut smites for health. Fotic getting burnt down by Kramer. Piercing arrow. Ooh. Just going shy there. That's going to be the Ocean Drake for LG. But this is the thing. There's such a heavy front line. That cannon barrage not going to kill Chance. There's such a heavy front line, and Kramer's coming into his stride. So top esports, they have to get onto this virus with the help of Azir, but when Azir's not alive, when Azir can't get towards the virus, LGD just win the fight. I mean, one thing you do have to bear in mind is... Oh, excuse me. Oh, Fotic excused. does not... I mean, when you think about tank shredding AD carries, Misfortune is not the one that you think Hang on, of. let's look at this. Sonic Wave does it. Oh Flash Smite, okay. Now, and that's all she wrote. Look, Peanut gets the credit because that was a nice cue. He sniped him. That Smite was about to come through, so Peanut, you're a legend. I mean, this guy's got so many accolades behind him, and now he's going to add one to the list. 369 has Flash, but it's not going to be able to do much with it. Peanut with yet another kill, 6-2-6. Six, six. This was the head-to-head -head coming into the game. It was Peanut against Casa, and in game one, it was Peanut's favor. In game number two, he's making the same statement. Now, look, they're just taking everything. Red buff goes over to Kramer. Five members top. This double tank comp is spreading the love with upgradable items from Yuki. There's already a Blade of the Rune King and an Obsidian Cleaver there as well. And if LGD keep pushing, I just think they can. They don't need to stop. Yeah, they're just going to go for this one. I mean, who's, zero damage. Who's going to kill them? <laughs> like, realistically, <laughs> Yuki and G are just going to get deleted. And LGD, we might be witnessing a 2 0 they're over not top stopping. right before our eyes. Carter goes in, can't do anything. Double kill for Kramer. And now Knight of Photic trying to turn things around. Lai is going to be the first casualty from the side of LGD. Knight wants more. I don't think he's going to find it. 369 here. Cannon Barrage on cooldown, though. Has Flash and has the Emperor's Divide available. He's still looking, but LGD are going to back away. And they get the inhibitor turret. And just look at the score lines right now. Casa is having... Oh, no. A horrible, horrible... G oh, no. Here we go. Are you ready? Ornolf is almost available. They're either waiting for that or Knight to step in range. Oh, no. Oh, dodges it. Gets away, but for how is. long? Knight drops his tower, though. Wow. Okay. He's going to stay alive. Pings Knight are going dead. Look at the armor. mini map. 369 goes in, but he's a little bit early here. 1v1 onto Peanut. There's no follow-up damage onto the Gangplank. Now there is. Kramer finishes the kill okay. off. Lies happy to tank up all four members. He's barely <laughs> taken damage so far. Aftershock doing so much work. And there's and a the massive sniper is sniper straight on to There's a red dot on top of this Lord, or on top of this Maokai. Top Esports so far behind. They're getting artillery support They're here. getting the sixth man in on the Summoner's <laughs> Rift. A 4K gold lead just about. And I have to say, while there's a bit of doubt towards this composition and where the damage would come from, I love it. I love the double tank. I love the fact that it's purely just Kramer who gets to run free in this game. And because of some really good fights, LGD are in a position where this comp becomes near unbeatable. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm watching a game of Earth here. Yeah. Where it's like, you've just got this brick wall of tanks that are <laughs> invincible. The laser the moving across. Rival. There we go. The tower's gone. Uh, but... It's hilarious because when I was looking at the comp, I was like, okay, where does the damage come in? But the real logic here is you don't need that much damage when the enemy just can't ever kill that's that, you. That's that thinking meme, isn't You just it? outlive yeah. them. Makes sense. Base damage will do. <laughs> <laughs> so well. now to the counterplay. Knight and Photic have to start building tank. Ah. It's the only way. <laughs> that sounds really intelligent. It sounds like the five-head play. <laughs> I don't know right if it is. And when we get towards the late game, like, if we even get to that point, will 369 and Knight be able to carry? Will this Azir Gangplank be able to match this team? Because it does rely on Knight. It relies on Knight getting into the back line and getting a really good Emperor's Divide. And at this point in the game, we have seen a little bit from Knight, but Kramer's been really, really safe. And yeah. it, it does feel a little bit like top right now are relying on LGD making a mistake, mm. which is a very difficult position to be in as a team because if Kramer steps out of position they can get a catch, sure, this is very winnable. 
But I don't see Kramer doing that. I don't see why Kramer would be... Why there would be an opportunity for him to miss position. Because this whole comp from LGD just wants to group. They just want to A-Ram. They want to fight into 5v5. It's like the brick wall in front of him as well. Something has to go wrong. And Lies and Yuki speak of the devil right now. They're towards the dragon. This is one off getting the soul. And th this is very much a showcase composition for the side of LGD. Peanut can flex on the Lee Sin. We could have a trade though. Ocean Drake started up by LGD. Top. Yuki does this very fast. Now I'm going to back away from the Baron. I'm going to look for a fight instead. But the Ocean Drake still kept going. That means Peanut oh. will be able to get it. Cataclysm goes in onto them. Bullet time onto Lies. He's still alive, though. And that's a knock-up and a kill going down onto Karsa. I don't think they have just enough damage in these fights. And Lies, I mean, he's just not the target. But who is the target? He just doesn't die. That's right. Now Top looking for a pick onto Yuki. But again, how are you going to get a pick onto an Orn? And especially if, if Kramer is nearby, then that Orn is going to buy the time for you. The time that you need to turn the fight and get even more. LGD have priority mid, and after that, after that big play, Cast is not up for 10 seconds. They have a very fed virus. Who can just rush this Baron? I've just had horrible flashes of the future before my eyes. I'm really worried that maybe this becomes the meta. <laughs> well, hang on. I, please, please not this. LGD have got the inside track to meta, but <laughs> teleport coming through. Juggamore's LGD. coming, I'm telling you. Here we go. Fight on our hands. Four versus five, though, right now, because Cars is nowhere near. Lai's taking a bit of damage, but he is Maokai, so it's fine. Peanut gets the Baron. There's no ult from the tanks, but a good hook. Flashback from Yu Yanjia, and he gets the kick on tonight. Empress uh -oh. Divide, not enough. And Kramer with one, but he wants more out of this one what? for sure. Huge damage from Karsa, but there's just no follow-up whatsoever. Double kill now into the pocket of Kramer, and it's going to be Lies finishing off 369. There's another one as the triple comes on through. Fotix slowed, and he knows he can't get away yeah. from this one. Give him the quadra. Nope. It's going to be Yuki taking Kramer the is the happy son and lies in Yuki. Ma and Pa take him <laughs> to the candy store. Give him all kills. Give him everything like he deserves. This time it's not Kramer carrying LGD. It's everyone else giving him a rest and giving his back a bit of a massage. Putting Kramer onto their shoulders and carrying him. Not necessarily in scoreline, but emotionally over the finish line here as they take down these towers. I don't think there's much the top can do about this one. They're going to try, though. Last stand coming out. Empress Ooh. Divide is massive. And with the tower here, maybe they have the damage. Yanjia against the world. Here comes what 369. Can he finish things off? It doesn't <laughs> look like it, to be honest. <laughs> He's going to walk up forward. Peanut goes down. Dude, Lies actually going to be pushed away. No way do they hold on right here. Yuki oh trying to finish God. things off. Orn is an assassin, ladies and gentlemen. Photic. Oh, no. He can't heck? really want him. Orn is ridiculous. Photic can do nothing about it. And Yuki is going to ponderously knock this Nexus <laughs> down. Photic's going to die to the minions. Oh, it's all gone wrong for top, but Cast is back alive. They've held on. Somehow, <laughs> some way. <laughs> Yuki. This is a comical game. This is fantastic. I have to say, LGD have the biggest brain I've ever seen. Right, I'm telling you, man. If this becomes the meta, Juggamore's coming back. Oh, you called it. Let's have a look at this. Peanut. It's just such a stylish lease in. You love to see this pick on him, and even though you got to give props, watch for Photic here, the flash away to get the ult with so much space. It's a really key ability that if you didn't have the composition LGD that did, and you didn't have the lead, this fight turns back around. But all the damage source is dead after Photic, and he gets chased down by Ma Pa and the son of Kramer. But with Baron still an open nexus, boys, it's time we're running it down. Here we go, straight on towards the Nexus. They've got the Baron and the Super Minions, but the Baron is about to run out. Peanut uh -oh. wants the 1v1, and Casa can't do anything about it. That's going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. The Redemption comes down way too early, but it doesn't matter. Yu Yanjia tanking up the team, doing some work. Oh, my, oh my days. The kick onto Photic. Peanut is just styling.
on the side of top esports. He knows he's the better jungler, and he's here to prove it. And the Nexus doesn't get immunity because it is the Atara to LGD. are going to keep going. Oh, Knight goes in, gets a three-man knockup. Can they finish the kills, though? The Nexus is getting burnt down. Lies and Pina end the game, and LGD 2-0 top. Not what we expected. Top esports were meant to be a top three team in the league. They were meant to be one of the best teams in the league. Yet we got an LGD masterclass, I'm calling it. Or at least some form Mastermind, of Big maybe. Papa, Big Mama, and Little Son composition coming together. And the cool uncle and in, the, in the Lee Sin coming out from Peter, who's just styling around the he's jungle. He's not the creepy uncle. He's, he's the cool uncle, that's right. I don't know what you call the support. It's like your little brother who just wants to tag along. <laughs> But that was, I think, the best series I've seen from LGD in at least, let's say, a year. Different teams, different players, I know. But yeah. that is the best because they just had a game plan and they stuck to it. Phenomenal stuff going out from LGD. On the other side, though, top. I mean, my power rankings are well and truly destroyed at this point. Yeah. I said they were going to finish the season first. I was very, very wrong. But... That's life, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? LGD 2-0 <laughs> over top, and I said it right at the start of the day. You can never count any team out. Rogue Warriors nearly did it to IG, and LGD very much do it to top. That's such a big series win as well. For LGD, who started 0-3 into the LPL split, they have a series win over top, and they are able to push themselves up the rankings, get away from the teams like V5. And I just love that the damage here was so high on top esports, but it all went into the tanks. It all went into Yuki and Lies. And double tank's not boring. If you look at one carry, it's super easy to cast. Super exciting. And it was actually just like a wet noodle with all the water still inside the tube. And you whack, you go to whack the, you know, <laughs> let's, you whack someone, right? And instead of going, ha, oh, that's funny, you break the noodle on their Wait, back. Wait, is that, is it a reference to the swimming pool thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always thought it was like actual noodles. No, no, no. It's wet noodle. Isn't it? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, kimchi slaps are pretty aggressive, as we've <laughs> all seen from the Korean drama life. Yep. But no, I've, I haven't watched it. I'm so sorry. But it was, look, it was it was double tanked. To keep it simple, when you have two tanks like that, it's, it's simple to play. You just need to protect Kramer. Yeah. But LGD played it out so well, and I think that's uh, it's quite magnificent to see that there is direction on this team. Finally, that LGD actually know where they're going and that peanut really carried that early game and actually gave us his best game that we've seen so far in the lpl spring since leaving the lck and we we've been talking about top esports being this super team cars are coming in it's going to bolster the mid jungle duo yep. of him and knight knight had some highlight moments in this series it has to be said both on the zoe and the azir he played his heart out but Casa just getting sheerly outclassed in the jungle by P. Yeah, when when you have a hype jungle matchup like this, you expect more. The last time we saw, it was not mentioned, but the last time we saw Peanut and Casa go up against each other was in a main tournament. Was MSI World uh, MSI Finals King Zone versus RNG in 2018, where RNG won out, and Casa was the better jungler on the day. And since then, we've seen flashes of brilliance when they versed in Rift Rivals in 2019. But apart from that. This was a, a matchup I was looking forward to, one that Peanut dominated all the way. And the most exciting thing about this win to me is the evolution of LGD. Because mm. when you look at the first three series they played, they didn't look like they were on the same page. It looked like Peanut was making some plays happen. Peanut's yeah. been playing great the entire season so far, but the rest of the team just wasn't able to follow up. They'd, it didn't feel coordinated. It didn't feel like they had a plan. This LGD today, they had a plan, they came out strong, and they were able to follow up on what Peanut was setting them up for. Whether it was a better draft or whether it was the fact that in, in, in game one where they, they knew what they were doing, where they really highlighted why the poke come from top esports couldn't hit LGD where it hurt. And then we got into a game two where the tanks were just so oppressive where yeah. I'll look back in that game and 100% I'm going to review that game because that was like a perfect example of how a really simple composition with a team like LGD who are still trying to develop themselves can make shot calling a, a lot more strong, like a lot, lot more well-rounded, yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I mean, I'm really hoping that we don't start to see these double tank compositions plague no, yeah. the game. We've seen that before in previous seasons. It's not the most fun. 
to watch. Then we get like twitches again. And we get Cogmores. very long games. We get very hard to kill people. I love Cogmore. But Especially the meta Ocean. that he thrives in is not a fun meta. If we have an Ocean Soul, I mean, if that game went on any longer, LGD had an Ocean Soul. One thing I will say, though, about tank matters, Vayne comes back usually. Yeah. And Vayne is fun to watch. Vayne is fun to watch. A big skill check. And Kramer is a really good AD carry. So teams like this that have already shown us they're willing to dabble in draft a little bit means to me that I think we're going to see an LGD who will get more confident, who are willing to change things up versus different teams. Like, versing top here, their ability to really nullify the solo lane strength, especially in that second game, and just say, well, bottom lane is a slugfest. It's always pretty much even. It just resets after every wave. Let's play to that strength, and let's put tanks in the solo lane, because we know that we're going to skirmish early, and we're going to win them with tanks. And I like that LGD really pushed their lead once they started to get ahead, especially mm. when they got the Baron. Granted, they did get the Baron off of top, essentially throwing they tried to do the 20 minute baron it all went very very wrong for them but then snowballing getting the inhibs early on trying to force the end of the game as soon as possible because they knew that the azir was going to scale up they knew that the gangplank was going to scale up and once the healing reduction comes on through there was definitely potential win conditions available for top esports lgd don't even entertain that but idea but we, we do have some highlights from hey. Pina that we can take a look through because all right Let's, if let's you want to see stylish Lee Sin, this is it. So, I went on a big rant this game about how LPL is a skill check. And right here, for Peanut, it was a skill check for Knight, who... I'm not sure why he decided to flash there in the end, but... Uh, a little small shout-out to Chance, who we haven't talked about at all. Chance was very consistent this game. A lot of really, really good plays that controlled the tempo of, of this bottom lane of top esports. And... I know we had a little bit of laughing game at Photic versus Peanut, but it's this point here where you realize, like, actually, super hard to kill the people on yeah. LGD. Like, Lies and, and Yugi, the boy squad. It's so sad for Knight, though. He nearly goes for the 1v4 <laughs> if he was just a little bit more fed. But, I mean, that, that was the moment at which Top lost the game. It was yep. competitive until then. Yeah. Oh, just another good kick. I mean, I, I really think we're seeing flashes of brilliance from Peanut. Uh... I, it's not even flashes. It's no. consistent brilliance okay. at this point. We're seeing an epileptic flash of brilliance <laughs> of Peanut. Because Peanut right now is meant to be one of the best junglers in the league. Due to his name, due to his standing, due to, due to who he is. But we don't get that because we have some of the best junglers in the world who have yet to be tested on the world stage. And we said how this game, this series, was the match between Carsa and Peanut. Who is the better jungler? Who's going to be able to control the pace of the game? As you see it right there on your screen, Peanut was very much the one to win that out in the end. And I think deservedly as well, Peanut is going to be able to grab our MVP yeah. for this series, as you can see. I mean, the final <laughs> fight. Knight this, this was gave it such a good effort. Yeah. But it isn't just Knight versus everyone else. It is about Knight and the team, but of course, let's just quickly talk about Peanut. This was such a good series from him. This was a beautiful game of his Lee Sin, and a reason why when people think about Lee Sin across the world, you know, classically, they think about Insect. They think about Cass's Lee Sin from the past, but I also think about Peanut's Lee Sin, and I got it exactly how I remember it in that game. And look at the kill participation. Almost 90% there when it's such a bloodthirsty game as well. Phenomenal stuff coming out from him. There were a lot of kills across the game, and he was part of almost every single one of them. Okay, not again. Well, goddamn. An LGD 2 0. I didn't think we'd be ending the day with that, Munchables. I no. did not think we'd be ending the Let day check with the that. script. No, this is, <laughs> no, this this is not script. what that said. <laughs> this ain't in the script, and we wrote this. So. Yeah, I mean, this changes everything, though. For top esports, like, where do they go from here? What happens from here? Because top are meant to be the team that, you know, once yep. again, make playoffs. They're meant to be a top eight team. This is just one loss, but this is a loss that affects their standings throughout because if we see this again, if we see this kind of, I guess, sloppy gameplay, to call it what it is, from top esports, then down the rabbit hole they go, down the drain. And especially from Castle, this was a really rough series. Yep. They went for the first pick Rex sign, game number one. It really didn't work out for him. Game number two, they're the ones with the Jarvan. What he lost to in game number one still doesn't work out. He had a little bit of a shine in the early game there in game two, but it was nowhere near enough to impact the game. And 
it definitely felt a little bit draft focused, especially in game number two. LGD, I think this was a compositional win, but also just Peanut styling on people, able to get, I mean, it's hard not to say that a lot of this game was just down to that singular Baron play where Peanut manages to throw Sonic Wave blind, yeah. finds a kill with it, and then but, he's able to get the look, Baron on top But look, even from there was the execution around, you know, the blue side as well, where even though the tanks come out and gold is even, where the tanks actually have some resources. They're getting some gold on them individually, and they are being... They're